What he's offering us is a way out. And I believe that the way out is when you discover who you are, that you have a place in Abba's heart, all those insecurities and fears just start to dissolve and, and, and start to melt away. Let's have a look at some scripture. Say, Lord, I don't want to be a spiritual orphan. I want to be rooted and grounded in the love of God and understand who my daddy is. Turn to John 16, verse 27. I got a number of scriptures here I'll read, starting with this one. For the Father himself loves you. These are the words of Jesus. In that day, you'll ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I will pray to the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from God. Now tell your friend next to you and let it go into their spirit. Tell them the Father himself loves you. Tell them again. Tell them one more time. From Luke chapter 12, verse 32, we read this. This is a scripture that just came alive for me many, many years ago when I was in Bible college. I just read this at the beginning of the morning. It just got all over me, and it says this. Fear not, little flock. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And so now this is not me striving for something, but this is him giving and handing it to me. It's his good pleasure to do that. Uh, 1 John chapter 4 verse 8 tells us clearly, God is love. And 1 John 3, 23, very clear, this is his commandment that you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's very important. How many believe in Jesus? Wave at me. Come on, wave excitedly like this is a big deal. Okay. And love one another. See, that's it. Problem is, though, we, we struggle to love one another because we're we're competing with one another, or we're, we're jealous of one another, or we're, we're at odds with one another, or there's a breakdown in relationships for some reason, and, and that's what we're wanting to fix today, or, get, or at least begin a process of fixing these things. But that's his commandment. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and love one another. How many think you can manage that? You got the first part. Okay. Um, here's another one. Matthew 22, 37. I have preached so many messages off this passage of Scripture. Um, but Jesus is asked the question, what is the greatest commandment? And without hesitation, he says... Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. Okay, what's the first commandment? What's the great commandment? Love the Lord with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. And the second's like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. So now we got three things to do here. Love God, love one another, love yourself. That's the business we're in because it is a kingdom of love. All right? You clear? Okay, how's business? How are you doing at this? How am I doing at this? Um, as, As believers, you know, I'm convinced that we need to move from a focus of 
light and truth onto a focus of love and grace. And that's because the truth is God is love. There is a fundamental foundational aspect to this thing. I remember Jack Frost one time pointed out, he said, you know, John, we, we, we rightly talk about the cross as the center of Christianity. And yet there's something even more fundamental than the cross. And it kind of took me by surprise a bit because I, I said, oh, really? What's that, Jack? I should have known the answer. But, but he said, it's the Father's love. It's the love of God. And then he quoted John 3.16. For, or because, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So the cross was a plan and a strategy, a rescue strategy, that came from the Father's heart of love, because he so loved you. Tell your friend again, the Father himself loves you. And so we need to move from... This, the focus on truth and the focus on the, all of that over, over to love. Now, when you're focused on truth, I, I, I grew up as a young Christian just trying to get my doctrine straight. And of course, my doctrine was more correct than your doctrine. How many know that one? And so what it does is it becomes when you're, when you're contending for truth and contending for all that stuff, if you're not careful, it will begin to compromise your ability to actually honestly care and love other people. But Jesus never compromised on the truth, but yet it did not impede his ability to love, let's say, the unlovely even. So what we need to clearly do is move from the, an old covenant understanding into a new covenant understanding. The old covenant is measured by your performance. The new covenant is measured by your faith. The old covenant is kind of fear-based, yeah? The new covenant is love-based. In the old covenant, we work for acceptance and approval. But in the New Covenant, we work from acceptance and approval. You don't stop working. You just have a different motivation. In the Old Covenant, it's all self-effort. Here's the rules. Here's the strategy. Here's the game plan. Do it. But in the New Covenant, it's a response of love. And I'm convinced that lovers will outperform the workers at least two to one. Because they, they just think they're having fun and they keep going and going and going, you know, it's amazing. The old covenant is mission and task oriented, whereas the new covenant is relationally oriented. And so it's out of relationships, beginning with God our Father, that he is calling us into this thing. The old covenant sees God the judge, you know, the big cop in the sky, the one who's going to evaluate you and put you under a microscope and point out a million things that are still wrong with you. But the, but the new covenant uh, reveals God the loving Father. And uh, why the transition? Well, it's because all of the righteous requirements of the law have been satisfied through Jesus Christ. And so, can you imagine for a moment what it would be like to be perfect? Somebody says, I can't imagine. No. But God in his absolute perfection, therefore he cannot just overlook stuff that's wrong. If he does, He's no longer perfect, right? So we're singing about the, the holiness of God and, and he is so holy, but the word really means he's separate. He's in a category by himself. He's in a class by himself. And so there's this, 
this, this in, you know, irreconcilable difference. And Jesus, the perfect one, steps into that place, takes my sin and yours upon himself, and dies a horrible, agonizing death on the cross, but he paid the debt that was outstanding. So your debt is paid when you believe. And so I love that about John 3, 16. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will never perish, but have everlasting life. And so there's nothing for you to do now except believe that it's all been done. Can you shout hallelujah or something at like that? Woo! So now this has opened the way for us into the Father's love. And I think that the message of the revelation of the Father's love is perhaps the greatest need among Christians around the world today, globally. Because somehow or other, we, we get born again and we carry the old covenant mentality right into our New Testament experience and then we keep striving and contending and, and you know, we begin to take refuge among our own tribe. And just like the birds, you know, they're all together, they're in their own tribe, but they're still bickering among themselves, aren't they? Until somebody really different comes along, and then they can get together to pick on that one. It's kind of the root of what bullying is. It's, it's, and, and what he's offering us is a way out. And I believe that the, the way out is when you discover who you are, that you have a place in Abba's heart, all those insecurities and fears uh, just start to dissolve and, and, and start to melt away. How many want that? 